tell you guys about my friends at SD Bullion. All right. Precious metals, gold and silver. Some people go, I don't really understand why this is a big deal. I want you to understand this. A couple of years ago, I got very concerned about the state of the world. All right. We're talking about inflation. We're talking the, the, the amount of debt the U.S. has is so absolutely insane. We're talking about the possibility of a one world technocracy, a one world currency, which is just so very, very frightening. We are printing money and spending money at a rate that we cannot keep up with, frankly. So I said, okay, what can I do to diversify my funds that I have something in my hands in case the very worst happens? And that is why you need to contact SD Bullion. All right. I'm not saying go sell everything you have and buy a whole bunch of gold. I'm saying you may want to consider putting a little bit of your money in, into gold and silver. SD Bullion is a Christian owned company. They're passionate about training Christians about investment and about why gold and silver are a good investment. They have great pricing. They send straight to your house. They will send you a brochure. All you got to do is this. Text the word Cooper to 465-322. That spells gold 22. They're going to send you a brochure. They'll teach you about it, give you options. Or if you say, hey, I want to spend 75, 80 bucks. I want to get a silver coin or something like that. Text the word Cooper to 465-322. That's gold 22. They're going to give you a discount on your first order. All right. I do it. I bought all of my stuff for there. And there's just something about having it in your hand. You put it in a safe. And if the worst ever happens, you go, you know what? I know this for sure. This is a scarce resource, right? We're not printing gold. You can't make more gold. Can't make more silver. There's a limited supply, which means it's going to hold its value. So if that interests you, do yourself a favor. Contact SD Bullion and say, hey, give me, give me some information so I can understand exactly what this is. Text Cooper to 465-322. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Cooper Stuff. We're uh, filming this. We're at the end of our... American tour. That's right. Which always sounds cool saying, yeah. as if we're touring around the entire world. We are. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the entire world. We're finishing up the tour here, and uh, how's it, how, how do you feel about it? It's so great. This may be one of my favorite tours we've done. Mm. That's it's big talk. It's big talk. Uh, I think we're like five weeks in, and it feels like it's gone super quick to me. Like I feel like we've been out for like two weeks, honestly. It's Which, always a good way to know. Yeah, it's a good way to know how a tour's going. Everybody's getting along really well. Um, there's no, sometimes out here, there can be weird competitive stuff with bands or crews or whatever, and everybody's just, it's just gelling really well. Mm. So I could go another four. No, I'm ready to go home. But. <laughs> yeah, hopefully your wife's not watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She wants you home. <laughs> no, it has been pretty fast, though. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always figure. If I'm at the end of a tour and I'm like, well, that went real fast, it's usually a good sign. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it means you're with people that you just... Yeah, just... Some... You love them in Jesus' name, <laughs> which is a way of saying, <laughs> I know I'm supposed to love you, but I don't. Yep. Uh, good. Okay, good, good. No, it has been good. It's been great. It hasn't felt like a grind at all, so fantastic. People are coming out. I always told myself after 2020, I'll never take for granted a sea of people. In a theater, in a club, an arena, whatever, for granted again. So it's it's been a very great tour. You know what I'm saying. What about a sea of people if it's a protest? <laughs> well. Can, depending on what it's protesting. Yes, yes. All right. So, yeah, we're definitely, we're we're pick, we're pickers and choosers when it comes mm -hmm. to that kind of a sea. Mm -hmm. I could do without some of the protests. All right. So, um, why do you think it's been so good? Hit me. Hit me with your knowledge. Oh, man. That's something. Thrill, thrill me with your acumen. You're asking me a question that we've talked about many times in the dressing <laughs> rooms that we can't figure out. <laughs> but we have talked about that a lot, haven't we? Like, yeah. what's going on? Why is this, why is it going so well? Some, maybe one of the bigger tours we've <clears throat> done in the past five or six years. Um, I think it could just be a combination of things. Like, we've talked about maybe over the past few years, um, you said this, I think maybe people are more open to spiritual things um maybe i think people were just ready to get back to community i think we were so um starved of community for yeah. for a couple years and I, maybe people didn't realize they needed that so i, I think that both of those things play into it mm. yeah i think that that's i think that's probably right definitely part of it anyway it would be great if and we i mean who knows if this is happening but it would be great if we were coming back to a time uh, when people wanted to talk about things that matter, 
Yes. So you said spirituality. Yeah. You know, that would be great is if they want to go to Jesus, but we got to, we got to, we got to, you know, teach them about that. But what, what I find is it's really hard. Like the culture has gotten to a place where it's almost like, the, the ground was just not ready for evangelism. Mm -hmm. It's like you can't even talk about Jesus because people are like, I don't even want to talk about anything that matters at all. Like nothing does matter. So it's kind of hard to, exactly, it's like yeah. we're not even doing another step to say, let me tell you what that is. It, it just seems like not even a search for meaning. In it. And I wonder, and it'd be great if it were true, if after COVID pandemics, political upheavals, all economic downturn, People are going, okay, maybe we need to consider there might be something more to life. Mm -hmm. And if that was um, happening, that would be cool. Yeah. And we're a good band for that. Absolutely. We're the band for that. The band. And we talk about this every night. The amount of people <clears throat> that have never seen us before. A band, yeah. which is unusual for a band that's been around for, you know, 20 some odd years. and 58 years. <laughs> and tours a lot. Um that stuns me every night. Like, mm -hmm. it seems like nearly half the crowd. So I think everything you just said, I think we're gaining new fans, maybe that weren't open to Skillet's message before. Um, maybe some yeah, people are coming be. around. It's, but <clears throat> having a great time. It's It's been a fantastic um, life-giving tour. Yeah. It's been great. Good. All right, so you had a baby. Yes. Yeah, uh, so w w about seven months ago? Yeah, just over seven months. What's it like? It's amazing. You kept telling me it's the greatest thing in life. You kept telling me the, the, the months leading up to her birth. It's like, it's the greatest thing in life. And it truly is. It's just, and she's at a, she's at that phase too, where she's um, starting to see a little personality, you know, laughing at things and gooing and gagging and mama. And she hasn't dad dad yet, which I'm jealous about. I'm going to get, get home and fix that. Come on. But um, it's just so great. It's so fantastic. And, Hillary's a great mother, and we're just loving it. We're loving parenthood. What's what's your sleeping situation like? Are you glad to be on the road? So yeah, sleep? so I keep telling people when they <laughs> when they ask it, it's reversed from what it used to be. Usually, you don't sleep very good on the road, especially on a bus. Mm -hmm. You know, you just don't. Re I feel like you don't really ever get into a deep sleep on the bus. Now I get my sleep out <laughs> out here. <laughs> I get sleep really well on the bus, and when I'm home, you know, I'm waking up at. 6 a.m. going to bed at 9 30 p.m. I'm back on <laughs> 9 30 <laughs> 9 30 10 o'clock and more on like a uh, normal person schedule so yeah feeling rested out here right now but yeah. that's about to change Monday yeah <laughs> when we get home <laughs> yeah by the time you'll watch this <laughs> yeah you will not have slept for a week yeah that's right um mm. yeah interesting and, and so if we we're talking about I want to talk about trusting God a little bit because <clears throat> your story mm. How you got in skillet and whatnot. But before we get to that, what about trusting God with having a kid in the 2020s? So my kids are now 20 and mm -hmm. 17. Mm -hmm. And already, I mean, I remember people saying this when I when my kids sure. were born. They're like, can't imagine what it's like now, you know, grandparents. Everything's changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's like a level now of if you've got young kids, people watching Brian have young kids, people are pregnant. Yeah, a ton of Cooper Sub fans that are parents, young parents. It's a weird time to trust trust God with what what your kids are going to be like. So what's that like? Are you scared? Yeah, absolutely. or am I making you fearful? Uh, no, mo well, both. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. I mean, already <clears throat> it is such a weird time, um, and I, it's actually funny you asked this. I was listening to our good friend Elisa Childers. She had a guest on just talking about discipling your children. Um, and there's a really good quote, and you'll like this. I, I'm, I'm going to probably screw it up, but it's something like, we have to start from such a young age of teaching them worldview, what biblical worldview looks like. I think they said, if you wait until, you know, they're age four, five, six, seven, whatever. If you wait until they start asking you questions, you've kind of already lost half the battle. Mm. You know what I mean? So just, I'm trying to already prepare myself with apologetics, Cooper stuff, Elisa, Mama Bear apologetics. There's so many great ones out there that, you know, we've become good friends with. Um, but it is scary, yes. So I'm kind of, and honestly, I mean, I tell people this all the time, 12 years in being with, with John and Corey, um, 
I can't put enough emphasis on what that's done just for seeing how they've raised Alex and Zave. I've been like an uncle to Zave, which is going to help me in parenthood. So I've just been blessed with a lot of uh, really good disciple maker figures around me. Mm, that's great. I love it. Yeah, <clears throat> I like that because I do think that parents, I, I, I mean, and, and this is not judgmental against Christian parents but in any way. Because I, I kind of feel, I don't want to be one of those people that's always saying, like, the church messed this up. I don't mean that. But mm -hmm. but I don't think we've done the best job of training parents prior to having kids to them understanding what that role is. And I think Absolutely. it's natural for people to go, hey, I'm going to teach my kids when they get older. I'm going to take them to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. almost, it, it, almost like it's the church's job exactly. to catechize my kids. Mm -hmm. uh, well, no, they'll do that. Sunday school or uh, vacation Bible school in the summer. Yes. <laughs> Remember vacation Bible oh, school? Oh, yeah. 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 That'll be a key church camp. That, that'll happen as opposed to uh, it's the parents' job. Yeah. It's the parents' job to catechize your kids starting when they're young. Otherwise, they go and to hang out with their friends at yeah. age three at their little uh, pre what, uh, preschool or preschool. whatever it's called. Yeah. And next thing you know, everything's gone nuts. So I think that that's great yes. advice. It's got to start in the home. Because um, <clears throat> from a younger age now than when you and I were younger, they start, they're going to start hearing this this wor different worldview stuff. I mean, I know yeah. kids that are six, seven, that have cell phones already, which is bonkers. But, oh, gosh. Um, yeah, you, they don't have to look far to start hearing, you know, um, gender theory or, or whatever you want to call it. So it's got to start in the home. Mm. And I think probably needs to start at a younger age even, you know. Mm. Don't wait to start for them to start asking questions. I love that quote. I was just like, that's so true because many mm. parents... You know, I mean, I I feel like I've heard it so many times before. Well, you know, they're starting to ask questions, and which is good, but um, I want to start instilling it young, man. I you like know? it. Yeah, you know, I think it's important. Uh, and I just want to say, I was joking about being afraid. Obviously, we're not afraid. Sure. Um, I think we we absolutely do not need to be afraid because we have been given everything we need to overcome the world. You know, the, the Bible says uh, they they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. Mm -hmm. We know that Christians have overcome a lot more than we have to overcome in the 2020s Absolutely. in America. Yeah. You know, we're not being imprisoned for our faith. Mm -hmm. you know, we're not in China today. I mean, people, China today, India today, people putting their lives on the line. It's nothing like that. So Christians do not need to be afraid, but we do need to just understand what we're up against. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, uh, I'm kind of joking. I know you're not actually afraid, which is why I'm joking about it. But I think that's good. Sure. Sure, no, we're not afraid. We have everything we need um, for life and godliness, the Bible says. Yes. But I do think people need to be trained up. So let's talk about trusting God because that's a big part of your story mm -hmm. about coming with Skillet. Yeah. Um, it was probably, what, what year was that? 2010, 20, uh, 11? I guess early 2011. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. 2011. Mm-hmm. And um, which means you've been in the band now for like almost 13 it'll be, years. Uh, 13? It'll be 12 years on your birthday, which is soon. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 12 years. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. And trusting the Lord was a big part of that. And I think that's something I'd like to encourage people with today. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Some people may have heard it. Maybe, <coughs> maybe some haven't. But um, I joined, let's see, I would have been 23 years old, I guess. Um, and felt called to do music as a teenager. I was probably a sophomore or junior in high school and you know you, you feel called to do something but you don't always know how that's going to unravel or what steps it's going to be to getting there so um and you know it's it's an interesting time in life high school i mean you're you, you're a sophomore junior that senior year rolls around and you're kind of like uh what am I going you know what I'm saying? What am I gonna do here? I guess I'm not gonna be a professional <laughs> basketball player. Yeah. I guess yeah. NBA's not calling. Yeah. Wasn't gonna be on the PGA tour golfing, you know, wasn't good enough. Um <laughs> so you know, you become a senior and you I, I did what many do. Um went to college for a semester and you know, I was like, I have no idea what degree I want to pursue. So I kind of just decided I'm going to stop 
I don't want to keep throwing money down the drain if I have no earthly idea what I you know want to do. <clears throat> if I figure it out, I'll come back. You know, I'll if I figure I want to be a teacher or, or want to be whatever, I'll I'll pursue that wholeheartedly and come back. So stopped and was working at my dad's auto parts shop in small town Ohio and just kind of, I played at church. I played guitar at my church. Um, kind of, I played in some local bands, not, nothing really that big. Um, and did that, I see I graduated high school in 06. So it was four or four and a half years of doing that. And I kind of got to, I was like age 22, 23. And I kind of hit this point where I was like, God, what have I done? Should I have stayed in school? Um, nothing music wise was, was really coming to fruition. Um, so I remember it must have been January of, of 11. And me, and I, I should say this I wasn't some like prodigy Nashville guitar player that everybody knew about. You know what I mean? Who was like, oh, this dude's going to be the next whatever in the industry. I wasn't that. I wasn't even living in Nashville or or on one of the coasts, wherever, you know, everybody's like, you gotta move to Nashville, you gotta move to New York or LA. <laughs> it wasn't that guy, uh, I was still living in Ohio and I had met um, our good friend, Toby Mack. Um, I'd met his guitar player years ago, probably like 07 or 08. He's like the only connection, if you will, that I had to the industry. I didn't know a lot of people. Um, the cool thing was in 2010, you and Toby, had toured together yeah. so there's a little bit of that you know familiarity there where they had just toured together within the past year so I somehow I had a buddy I still don't know how I heard about this from from back home in Ohio I was like hey I heard Skillet's guitar players leaving I think you should see what you can find out and I was like okay well Tim is the only guy I knew from Toby so I shot him a text I'm like see what you can find out about this and all along he knew I was a rock guy he knew mm -hmm. rock guitar was my forte <clears throat> it's what I did so he's like oh interesting he's like all right let me let me hit Toby or let me get John's number from Toby let me see if I can figure it out and then I think within the next couple of days I you know immediately was in prayer about this like God if this is your will open the doors let it happen um and I received an email from our production manager about audition stuff you know this is what we're looking for send in videos playing x y and z these songs your testimony your bio um so, so immediately i was working for my dad i remember saying saying it was like 1 30 p.m i'm like dad can i have the afternoon off i need to go make an audition video <laughs> so he was like no yeah you gotta stay no sell yeah. some oil filters <laughs> um <laughs> yeah. So of course, of course he let me off and I went to uh, our church and um, my cousin Jared, whom you know, who's in Fight the Fury with us, he helped me with the video and uh, I got it sent in really quickly. I remember that. I think it was within two days. It's a cool thing now because you can video yeah. on, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Audition on YouTube means you don't have to fly somewhere, Absolutely. bring your stuff. You're taking three days, mm -hmm. not three days from your dad's auto shop. Yeah, well, just three days. Three four hours. hours. Exactly. Yeah. So sent everything in and um i remember i remember praying in the side room because you know it was a that was a struggle of four or five years like i said i was 22 23 i could have been done with school you know yeah. what i mean like so you kind of hit that panic mode where you're like <clears throat> have i kind of screwed up the trajectory of you know your professional life or whatever and and it was in that time of panic when all this kind of started coming to fruition so i remember praying and like the side uh one of the sunday school rooms like and the pessimist of me came out i remember thinking like a band of this size they've already had someone lined up you know what i mean so i was kind of i don't know if sabotaging myself is the right word but i was like i shouldn't even make this video they've already got somebody but i just remember praying in that side room lord i'm doing this video because i feel like i should after the you know it's edited it's done it's in your hands and you take it so and I was, I was so honest because I didn't think I, anything was going to happen. Um, and then I guess fast forward a couple months, uh, they had someone else out trying them out. And I, and I was content. I was like, okay, I didn't get it. That's fine. Um, I wasn't upset. I wasn't bummed. I just, at that point in my life, I was just wanting whatever God wanted me to do. If he wanted me to be a 
custodian at a high school, if he wanted me to, <clears throat> conti you know, continue selling auto parts at my dad's shop, whatever would build his kingdom is what I wanted. Um, so I remember yeah. a couple months went by and <laughs> I was at work at my dad's auto parts shop and that's when um, our production manager, Scotty, called me and then you guys called me that night and it all just started kind of happening so quickly. Um, very quickly. Very quickly. And I think two days later, I was on a plane to Texas. <laughs> um, we go down to Texas. You always got to do it. <laughs> I have to. Every time I hear the word Texas, I have to sing that. It's but a, a really cool. Weird ADD thing. Yeah, I love it. Um, a really, Texas! A really, <laughs> a really cool part of the story, which <clears throat> if you want to take it, it um, the, this is really weird, is I happen to be hanging with Tim. Uh, I went to see Toby. They were in Ohio somewhere. I happen to be standing there with Tim when he listened to your voicemail mm. about John called him just to check in about me, um, you know, kind of see. Interesting. What type of, yeah, it was really weird. Maybe, like, I, I didn't was know like, that. Oh, yeah. I'm, like, oh my I'm God. glad we're doing this podcast. So you'll you tell didn't me, know that. So you can tell me things. I had no idea you didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> we were standing there backstage and he let me hear your voicemail mm -hmm. and I'm like, are you going to go call him back? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're showing me this. And then you're like, wow, he talks just like he sings. <laughs> I remember thinking that actually. People, people really always come to me, you talk just like you sing. <laughs> it's I'm true. like, I don't really know what that means. It's but, true. Okay. But I thought I really, it kind of gave, <clears throat> gave me a glimpse into, I guess, the mission and heart of Skillet even then, before I even knew anybody, is that after the show, Tim. I'm like, well, what did you guys talk about? You know, what did you say? And Tim, and you can take this if if you want, because, I mean, there's been a lot of member changes in Skillet. And um, Tim said, Seth, the, this will give you a glimpse into the heart of what Skillet's about. He's like, John did not ask me about your playing, didn't ask me about whatever you can do on guitar. He said, I know within a week out here he's going to be able to nail the parts. I watched his video he'll be able to nail the whole set within a couple weeks. And he's like, John was asking about your heart. Are you truly sold out for Christ? What type of person are you to be around? Um, I thought that was really cool. Mm. That's the things he told me that night. Mm. And I, if you remember that. I, 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 that sounds like me. Yeah. I don't remember, but the reason is, <clears throat> and this is where I want to encourage people watching because I'm assuming we have a lot of musicians that watch sure. Cooper stuff. <clears throat> people have dreams. They feel... God's called me to do this or this and it hasn't worked out. Mm -hmm. You're always holding this tension, right? You know, yeah. of this, I feel this is what God's called me to do, but it's not happening yet. Do I keep pursuing it in faith? Mm -hmm. You know, like God said, so I'm doing, you know, like yeah, <clears throat> one of those things. Sure. Or is it, I don't, you know, maybe that's just a dream. Maybe that's something God wants me to give up and you don't really know. Mm -hmm. Something I feel really passionate about is that if you love the Lord God with all of your heart, he will bless your endeavors. If yeah. you obey the law of God, you are going to prosper. And so I feel like, I mean, I gotta have a guitar player that's good. He's gotta be able to play the parts. <clears throat> <clears throat> but there's a lot of good guitar players. Absolutely. There's a lot of, there's enough average people out there mm -hmm. um, that that someone will be able to do this and God can take an average um, somebody with an average ability. Mm -hmm. and now that might be getting a little bit, uh, for some people, maybe a little bit, uh, what's the right word? Spiritually or something, or mystical here, but I don't think it's mysticism. I think this is, <clears throat> um, to me, just blessing of, of, of living for God. I think if, you're, if your heart is for the Lord and you obey his words and you, you work hard, he's going to bless your endeavors. So what I see is God multiplying talent Mm -hmm. Based on your stewardship, it's mm -hmm. um, good. Now, God, God gives talents liberally. God gives talents to people who hate Him. Mm -hmm. God gives talents to people who will never serve <laughs> serve God. You know, the Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So, God gives talents to, to all men, even people that don't love God, people that love Satan. But, um, and, and and that's His choosing. He might give a ton of talent to somebody that hates him and he might give less talent somebody does it but then the principle comes in somebody that honors god and you know what, what was the word say about the um he opposes the proud but he gives grace mm -hmm. to the humble 
And if you're doing your guitar, like, God gave me all the guitar talent. It's all about me. It's all about me. At some point, I mean, God opposes you. Mm -hmm. So at some point, the Lord is going to come against your talents. And I don't know what that looks like. Sure. But that's frightening. Yeah. And we don't know what that looks like. But I also know that even where there wasn't a maybe as much of a gifting, I also believe then in the supernatural, miraculous blessing of God based on his covenant promise. Mm -hmm. Covenant law keeping leads to covenant blessing. So it sounds like me because I'm like, hey, there's a ton of good guitar players. I saw the tapes. It seems great to me. Does he love Jesus? Is he a humble person? And that's always been my favorite thing about you. You're a very humble person. People everybody that meet you says they go, he's so humble. And I say, yeah, that's what Seth's like all the time. That's what I was drawn to. God can take that. Mm -hmm. And then just, he just starts gifting and gifting and gifting. Before you know it, you're moving in a measure of talent that is well beyond maybe where you started. Mm -hmm. That's just stewardship. Mm, that's Come great. on now, I'll get excited about I that. Love it. But that's what that's what you're like. So I'm you know, I wondered if you might if your story might encourage people, because it is one of trusting the Lord. I feel God's calling me to do music. I'm trusting him to do that. I'm trying, I'm doing it, I it's not working out. Maybe he doesn't want me to. Yeah. There's got to be a lot of people watching. Sure, I guarantee with it. With their yes. particular dreams. But I just want to pick up on one thing and then I'll let you share yeah. whatever you want to share. The thing I like is you say, I turned it in. I did everything I could do. And in the end, I'm like, all right, Lord, it's in your hands. And if you want me selling oil filters for the rest of my life, that's cool. Because it's not about me. It's about mm -hmm. whatever you have for me. I think that's really good. What would you encourage people who are holding on to this? I have a dream. I think it's probably from God, but I also don't want to be, you know, the book of Proverbs calls it like the, I think it calls it the daydreamer. Yeah. And that what it says, yeah. like, like always believing in lofty fan. I'm going to be on American Idol yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to get rich, you know, uh, exactly. You know, what would you say to encourage people if they're in that place? Yeah. Well, I think <clears throat> like you said, just get into a place where you're humble on your face before the Lord. Um, if That's you, it. Yeah. I love it. Done. No. Done. <laughs> no, no, I mean, what? and we talk about this all the time. I, th I think I would say you have – one thing, you have to know who you are before you're getting into any sort of entertainment industry, even if it's Christian entertainment. Um, if you're not part of a church community, if you don't have accountability, this industry will eat you alive and spit you out and you won't realize who you are anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I would say to encourage people Good. is be serving, be part of a local church, have accountability, mm -hmm. have community um, in a local church. Not on, you know, online church is great. So it's great for what we do out here, but be part of a local body um, mm -hmm. and know who you are in the Lord before you're here. Don't wait until you're here to start serving him or serving others. Start now. Um, and make a difference where you're at. You know, you can make a difference in your local church playing guitar or playing drums or singing or, or whatever it is. Um, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Watching kids. Watch on yes. Sunday. Change those diapers. Go yep. serve, man. Absolutely. I love that. I think that's important because I feel like I'm curious if you agree <clears throat> or want to add something to it, whatever thoughts you have. I mean, people sometimes ask, I'm sure they've asked you this as well. I don't know if we've talked about it, but people say, John, so. Why are there so many deconstructed Christian artists? You mm, know, or, yeah. or when does that start? How, how does it work? And I always feel like a lot of that journey uh, to deconstruction begins because they don't have it, it's not necessarily accountability, like, how are you doing? How's your walk? Right. More like they're not, you know, the Bible says we are, we are um, a living, uh, what is it? We're stone by stone, mm -hmm. uh, stones side by side right yes. we're we're the temple of the lord basically mm -hmm. but say we're living stones sorry i got my bible confused but that's what it says <laughs> so we're living stones we're set side by side we are supposed to be together building something yes and i think i think a lot of musicians just don't they don't have that maybe they don't want that maybe they want it and just never got it and they're too busy i don't know their story but you get alone and and the devil just he just picks yeah. you off. Absolutely, it feels like that to me. You don't need to add to that. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking about that <clears throat> when I was, um, when I was saying that previously. But it's like, 
it's so depressing because I mean, I, I grew up in the 90s and I was literally talking about this with a friend this morning. Um, he's roughly my age. I grew up in the 90s and it's just really depressing. And you know, a lot of the artists, I don't know if a lot's the right word, a handful of artists we grew up on are just no longer in the faith. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's, and I do often wonder is, <clears throat> I think in many cases, maybe maybe musicians get into this world when they are so young. I mean, 18, 19, right. 20, they move to Nashville. They're immediately on the road. They never really take time maybe to even find a local church community. Mm -hmm. You're out on the road so much. Um, maybe the same thing's going on with your other bandmates. Um, and before you know it, you're all kind of, maybe they're you're all kind of drifting together and don't even realize it. Yeah. And they don't, they're not part of like a local body to kind of, keep them grounded in mm -hmm. the faith you know what I mean so I think it could be a handful of things I think it could be that um, and yeah I mean honestly that's something I always brag on to here is like I get so thankful uh, I think many people pick up on this Cooper stuff listeners or <clears throat> just skillet fans in general I think they pick up on the communal aspect of skillet we mm -hmm. talked about that um, and very much what you see is what it's like here you know the precedent that that John and Corey have set and just the community um, and just the discipleship. I think I speak on behalf of Jen too. We're roughly the same age. The The discipleship that we've gained just from being here um, and the precedent that John and Corey have set is just, it's something we'll carry with us our whole life that will trickle down. You're asking about fatherhood. It'll trickle mm -hmm. down to my family and grandchildren want to get emotional oh mm -hmm. man grandchildren yes. oh my god but just the the discipleship that mm -hmm. we've gotten here um the trickle down effect from it is just you can't you just can't even explain it so mm. it's a very special place here and that's something i always yearn for for people that are wanting to get in to this i always say mm -hmm. yes you can pray if you have this dream pray that the lord blesses you and makes it come to fruition Equal, equally as much. Don't just pray that you get to do it. Pray who you get to do it with, because it's equally it's as good, important. Yeah. It's it's equally as important. So that's really good. I, I think. I, I mean, I know I kind of drifted there, but no, mm -hmm. not at all. I mean, I think it's great. I think that I think that encouraging young musicians to prioritize church life, absolutely, is something that's um, strangely it's so simple but strangely never said mm -hmm. that's not a thing in nashville no you don't hear people talk about it. they're like so what are you going to do where are you going to get gigs and introduce you but it's almost like yeah at some point i'll probably find a church it's it's sort of a backwards way of doing things yeah it's it's reverse <clears throat> yeah absolutely rather than making it a priority now if we were if we want to actually ext extrapolate that to the church in general mm -hmm. i mean I think finding a church is not even a huge priority for a lot of Christians in the nation. Also, it's almost like we'll we'll do that when we get to it. We'll have kids, and we'll no, we'll get, get my job. Yep. We'll eventually get there. I do think it's a lack of understanding about the community. The sometimes you call it the covenant community. Mm -hmm. This is who we are. We are all in this together, and that's what life is about. And then you find your you find your identity in that, you know, and you're serving and. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that's a really important aspect. So you are 34? Five. Five. I just turned 35 on this tour. Yeah. Right. Okay. 30, 35 years. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> so you're 35. <clears throat> what do you hope happens with Skillet in the future? People always ask me this. Every time oh, I gosh. do an interview, they go, so what's in the future for Skillet? I'm always like, oh, um, playing concerts. Being studly, oh, man. having a gorgeous beard. I don't know. I'll always have the lesser beard. It's not lesser. It's just not as yeah. huge. That's a good question, though. I mean. What are other things in your life that you hope to do someday? Gosh. PGA Tour? Are you going to no, perform? Are you going to do some golfing? That's not going to happen. Never <clears throat> going to be good enough for the PGA Tour. <laughs> um, I'll say this, because I was in that same conversation with a friend this morning. He has actually... You know, he's like, what do you feel like God has called you to do in life? Um, and I was like, well, I've kind of been living it for the past 12 years, but um, it's definitely morphed. I mean, because when you're 22, 23, and you, you're out here touring, playing in front of lots of people, of course, it kind of feels like, well, you probably remember, like, 
the upward trajectory of skill that happened when you're, you know, your crowds are bigger. You're like, this is everything I've worked for. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. As a musician, mm -hmm. it's awesome to see people singing your songs and know the songs you're playing. And But I feel like over from 23 to 35, that's definitely more. Like, of course, that's still fun, but I feel like Skillet has become, it's always been very kingdom focused, but it just feels like over the last three or four years, um, that's just magnified a lot. Mm, you know, yeah. it's just very much, mm. it's kind of really cool just to step back, you know, realize I'm a part, we're a part, we're a, us four are a part of something. Just the doors God has opened worldwide, you know, yeah. and you're across the world and just to see the places he's allowed this band to proclaim his truth, um, it's just kind of, amazing just to be a part of it you know mm. you I don't just to step back and just kind of look at man this is amazing and it's just humbling when you look at it like that just <clears throat> it's kind of just like thank thank you lord for letting me be a part of something you're using um yeah and just realizing in day-to-day -day interactions um out here on tour people you're interacting with you know it's so much more than just the crowd that's listening to the music it's security guards the other bands the crew you never know how you're going to impact someone's life and how God may open up a door um, for, to share the gospel with people. So I think it's just always being in tune with that every day. As soon as you step off that bus, knowing, God, I'm representing you today. Mm -hmm. I'm representing Skillet today. Mm -hmm. Not every day out here is easy. Sometimes you're in a bad mood. But realizing before you step off that bus, let me point others to you, Lord, you know. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I think maybe as we close, I then might um, end with encouraging people. You know, there's a Bible verse that most everybody that's ever been in church knows, especially if you've been in church since you were a kid. You learned it in Sunday school. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. <clears throat> Do not lean on your own understandings, mm -hmm. right? But I think I want to encourage people with that. I think if there's something in your heart, <clears throat> excuse me, I lose my voice at the end of the tour. Um, if there's something in your heart that you believe is a fire from the Lord, however, whatever language you want to use uh, to describe that feeling when you feel called to do something, that's a hard thing to describe. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes you're right, but things don't work out the way you thought they were going to work out. I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Seth's story is a little like that. Like, yeah. I thought I was called to do this, but here I am selling oil filters and I'm in the middle of nowhere, Ohio. Where was that? Redneckville, Ohio, you were from? Wheelersburg. <laughs> Wheelersburg. <laughs> Redneckville, Ohio, I think <laughs> you, you said. Say that. I'm proud of it, daggummit. No. <laughs> right, I'm proud of it. You yes. should be. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being a redneck. <laughs> but you're up there in the middle of nowhere. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. We, we have, most, most people have those kind of stories. You never know what God is going to do. And I think there's two things I want to encourage you. Sometimes you just got to hold on in, in faith. Mm -hmm. This is what I feel God's calling me to do. I'm mm -hmm. holding on in faith. I'm not, I'm not doubting the Lord. I'm not doubting his goodness. And I say that because I know a lot of people that have been holding on in faith for a long time. Yeah. And it never happened. And then they, they begin to question yes. whether God's good in the first. Maybe God's not even good. They get bitter. Mm -hmm. He never gave me the dream. I thought I was prompt. He told me this and this and this. Or I felt this and this and it didn't happen. And now I'm mad at God. And he doesn't give the, and I'm going to make it happen myself. And they go down these bad paths. You got to trust the Lord with all your heart. Hold on to that. If you feel it's something that God's called you to do, pray on it. At the same time, also hold on to the fact that God knows what's best for you. Mm -hmm. You're trusting in the Lord with all your heart. Don't trust your own understandings. God knows what's best for you. And I have known some people who, uh, I think I've shared this before, but I'll share it again. I've known musicians. They were like, I always felt called to do music. God never did it. And I know I never understood why. And I've thought, I understand why. Yeah. I, I don't think you are going to be in a position to handle fame, mm -hmm. um, people good. looking at you, handle the road. You're not in community as it is. Yeah. Things could get very bad. This could, God not giving you what you asked for could be the very thing that God, that kept you in the kingdom all saves right your soul yeah. saves your soul yeah that's good so god knows what's best for you so i would encourage people trust the lord have faith in what you feel he's called you to do and pursue it with excellence 
work at it hard, all those things, yes and amen, I think it's good. At the same time, remember that God is good, and if and if it doesn't work out just the way you thought it was gonna, or the way you wanted to, that's okay, because God, he, he is a, a God that gives, uh, the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from the Father of lights. He's not gonna give you a bad gift, he's giving you a good gift, and it is going to be the gift that, that is best for you and serves his purposes. So I want to encourage you guys with that as we leave. And thanks for joining the show. Absolutely. It's fun. Follow Seth on social media. He's a stud. Thanks for watching Cooper Stuff. Read the Bible. Cooper Stuff.